when we had last left Team Bald. They were helping out Corgan, who needed to recover the now missing book or tome of Kaza. But that led them to Pimlico's place, where the book was meant to be turned in. However, it turned out that Pimlico was slain, perhaps by Corgan's former adventuring party. And so Team Bald traveled all the way back to the slums district, where atop the copper coronet did they find Corgan's old adventuring party and the book. But it was after a fearsome exchange of words that uh, his former adventuring party were slain and the book recovered only to potentially be sold off or maybe stored away for something else in the future who could say now team bald turned their sights inward to the copper coronet where they would hopefully in some way maybe solve the weird horrible slavery issue there but who could say maybe they need to go somewhere else for that nobody really knew this is Baldur's gate 2 Enhanced Edition. Welcome back. Let's unhide all of that. Good. Now also, a bunch of folks wrote in. Let's see here. Gentle Viewer, Nubile Reptile, wrote in. You'll remember when we were looking over the Icewind Dale items, uh, we heard about this demon, Belhifet. That is actually a demon, a like devil, that we defeated at the end of Siege of Dragonspear. Whoa. Uh, there was also, let's see here, Gentle Viewer at Lisa Marie 6 wrote in with a little extra info about the Tiana versus Pris situation here. And in fact, it's random. It's totally dependent on the outcomes of combat, right? It, it's one could win, one could lose. Uh, Gentle Viewer at Rocher0901 wrote in saying that they're pretty sure there is actually no way to see Pimlico. That uh, it's a guaranteed state of affairs where Pimlico is dead. You can't actually get there quickly enough. And finally, general viewer at designated member wrote in saying that back here, there is unique dialogue from Salvanus back here. I think uh, that was the person who we tried to like fuck, but they have unique dialogue for every party member who is a woman. And there's a few uh, various NPCs in the game who do have, like, unique dialogue if you actually try to have your party members talk to them. So something to think about next time we go back out there. All right, then. All right. Let's head on over here. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Oh, shit. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah, back in the sewers. Okay. Yeah, we didn't really fully look around at everything here, did we? There were a few little extra areas we hadn't gone to. Okay. Well, I mean, how many were there, really? I think there was just the one. Right, because this goes up to the... Yeah, the Slaver Stockade. These are both dead ends. So it's just this, this route. Okay. Well, let's take a peek. There we go. Did we fully look at all of these barrels? Huh? I don't know. Yes. Let's have a peek. Empty. Empty. We may have already gone through them. Okay, let's look up here. Oh shit! Oh my god, where the fuck am I? Andorian? Myconids? A whole bunch of dead people? A Myconid king? Jesus. Yeah. Oh my god, alright, we better activate our enrage. So that way we don't get crowd controlled by the myconid sort of spores. Oh fuck. Whoever Andorian is, they are dead as shit now. <laughs> Was there a way we could have saved them? Could we have potentially saved them? They were friendly, mind you. Okay, actually hang on, let's go back. Okay. Let's let's see if we can actually save all those people there. There we go. Good, let's get in rage. Alright. And let's bless up. Oh fuck. Okay. There we are. I'm just going to immediately run over to Andorian. Good. And let's fire a magic missile at the king. Oh my god! 
Andorian takes 14 crushing damage from Mykonid King. Is there any way to save this dude? Is it even worthwhile, I wonder? Huh. There's not even any loot on the ground. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's try one more time. Okay, let's see here. Get all these buffs going. Good. Let's see, what kind of buff do you have for us? I mean, I guess we could do protection from evil, but that doesn't really feel right. Just draw upon Holy Might, and we'll do a Bless. Good. We still don't have haste, do we? No. Or at least not as Nalia. Okay. Let's try it right. one more time. Okay. I will Nalia, go over there. Let's get two of our melee Very on well. this dude. Good. Okay. Holy shit. Get on Try and it. shoot that. No! Oh my gosh, it can't be done. <laughs> it's too fucking hard. I don't know how you would do it. Okay. Good god, man. Poor Andorian. Whoever you may be. I don't know, I feel pretty bad about it. Are, is there really no way to save them? But good killing grounds, nevertheless. Yeah, because there's nothing else even in here of interest. Hang on, one more try. One more try. One, one more try. Getting itchy, let's go. Okay, okay. Here we go. Good. Alright. Everybody go and get this fool. How can I help? Nalia, shoot that. I'm going up here. Let's just start doing ranged attacks, maybe, in the hopes that that, that has an effect. Oh my god. Is it working? Holy shit. It might be working. No! Fucker, no! Jesus Christ! What did Andorian die from? Let's see. Andorian death. My comrade's fallen. My last breaths are of rage. What the fuck is going on here? Man, I don't know how we do it. Should I, should I just cheat and look and see? That way we don't waste any time. All right, hang on. Let's let's look it up real quick. Okay. Let's see. BG2 Andorian. This feels like some kind of situation where you can totally save this person. This shroom lord. Okay. Oh, this is a minotaur. Oh, no. Okay. Dude is required to die. Despite having 100 maximum HP, Andorian will only have 10 HP when the player enters the room, which means almost any damaging area of effect spell can be used to finish him off inside the Fog of War before the Mykonids get him for 3,000 XP. Holy shit. Okay. Weird. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very weird. We won't try to kill him, though, for the oh, extra XP. Yes. I didn't know about that. Feels uh, a little, little cheaty. Oh, uh, yeah, look. That was a minotaur. Weird. Okay. <laughs> what a, a strange little fucking area. Very well. All right. Man. All that for, <laughs> for not much. Uh. Okay, well, what can you do? Let's head on back out here. I guess we ought to check the other section then, huh? There we are. We can rest down here too if we want. Got casts back. There we are. Excellent. 
just as I would have thought. Good. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Alright, should we barge our way through here? We were definitely not welcomed back this way. So I'm not sure if it's actually the correct route to go. I mean, I guess we could send in, like, fucking Yoshimo. Oh, Hiding Shadows failed. Let's turn off the AI. Fucking failed. Jesus, no one can hide in shadows anymore. <laughs> no one can fucking do it. I can dance on the head of a pin as well. Oh my god. Alright. Fine. Let's just get back no here. Fuck it. At all. Declare yourself. You, what are you doing down here? This is a restricted area. Leave immediately or face the consequences. What's going on down here? What are all these cells? Who are you, might I ask? I'm allowed to be here. I'm one of Lieutenant's special guests. I go where I like. Stand aside. All right, all right. I'm leaving. No need to get violent. What's going on down here? I warned you, fool. Guards, intruders. All right, let's fuck them up. Wow, there are a bunch. Okay. Look, this dude is also some type of wizard's lord. Back here. Let's launch some junk that way. Should we also fire off, like, a bunch of bugs? Hell yeah. Why not? Should we also get maybe spiritual hammer at the ready? Okay. Good. Turn back on the party AI. Lovely. Oh shit, look at this fucking guy, using wizard's protections. Alright. Who of us has breach or anything? Spell thrust, that'll do, right? Fuck, did it do? <laughs> it looks like it dude just exploded. Okay, let's yank up all this junk. Globe of invulnerability. Is that, like, the full version? This spell creates an immobile, faintly shimmering magical sphere around the caster that prevents any first, second, third, or fourth level spells from penetrating. In essence, the area of effect of any such spells does not include the area of the Globe of Invulnerability. This includes innate abilities and effects from devices. However, any type of spell that can be cast out of the magical sphere any type of spell can be cast out of the magical sphere, and these pass from the caster of the globe to their subject without affecting the globe. Fifth and higher level spells are not affected by the globe, and magical attacks of fifth level or higher, such as spell strike and pierce magic, can bring it down. Okay. Well, ain't gonna have that one. A moment, friend. Oh. You are obviously not aligned with our captors. Might I know your name? Uh, my name is Lila Schnub, and I'm certainly not aligned with Lethanen and his men. Who are you? My name is my own business. What is it that you wish? I've no time to waste speaking with you. Who are you? I'm Hendak, a proud warrior from the north until my capture by slavers. I've been imprisoned longer than any of these men and survived, though only barely. He could not be a great warrior if you're not captured, I think. Oh my god. He hit him with the fucking Donald Trump. <laughs> oh my god, what did he fucking say about, like, John McCain, like, four years ago during the debates? He prefers, um, soldiers who don't get captured or whatever the fuck. Right? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I've done uh, I've done what I can to aid these other slaves and keep them living through the battles that Lettinen puts us on puts on to amuse his noble friends. I beg of you, please free us. I've never begged before, and yet I do it now, so I might wreck vengeance on Lettinen and end his sick and twisted enterprise. 
I have little taste for it myself. Very well. I will attempt to free you if I can. I have no argument with Lettinen. Why should I free you? I do not think I can help you right now. You will have to remain where you are. I think I rather like seeing a proud man beg. I have nothing against keeping slaves, Hendak. So you'll remain in your cage where you belong. Oh my god. Holy shit. Okay. I will attempt to free you if I can. I truly hope that you will be able to, friend. The Beastmaster has the key to our cells. If you get the key from him, we will be able to escape. I'll try, Hendak. Wait here. May the gods aid your task. Would that I could help, but I shall have to be content with the hope that Letinen will feel the cold swiftness of my blade. Free Hendak and the slaves. Let's see here. It appears that the Copper Coronet is keeping slaves to perform its entertainments. I've talked to a slave by the name of Hendak and agreed to free his people. I will need a key that is currently held by the Beastmaster located across the arena. Okay. Right. I wonder if... I'm assuming we cannot pick into this, right? No matter... Fleet of foot and all that. Yeah, the mechanism that operates this does not have a conventional lock. It may be warred against simple yes. spells. Okay. What? Any booby traps on this barrel? I feel like we haven't seen many yes. barrels that are booby trapped this time around. You Very know? Well. A lot of the booby traps are sensibly placed. Nothing in the barrel, though. This, will be simple. this isn't actually a staircase going up, right? It's like a hallway watchtower. Okay. Well, let's head over here. Let's go fuck up the Beastmaster. Oh shit. Oh. You can't be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Winter Wolf here. Oh, it got free. Sorry, Winter Wolf. Had to be done. Okay. Ah, uh, here we are. Good. Can we talk to the nobleman or whatever? No time at all. Can we scream up at them? No. Oh look, Winter Wolf Pelt. I took it. It might be like super duper rare. The pure white pelt of the Winter Wolf is soft and luxurious. It is often sewn into garments as diverse as the rugged vests of the northern Uthgart barbarians and the delicate and fashionable winter soles worn by noble women throughout the Sword Coast region. Okay. Man, All World right. of Warcraft really did lift a bunch of stuff from other games. <laughs> Tabletop and otherwise. Oh. I trust all is well. Eh, I don't recognize you. Who are you? I'm here to free the gladiators from their cells. Hand over the keys. I'm one of Lettinen's guests. What is this place? It doesn't matter who I am. Who are you? Perhaps I'll just leave. Excuse me. Hand over the keys. Fool, you'll never escape here alive. Come, Tabitha. Come, open the cages. Aid your master. Uh-oh. Get on. With Mutated it. gibberlings and panthers galore. All right. Let's bless up real quick. What is it now? Let's see, let's get Rage in too. Good. Okay, let's launch a little something something at that panther. I'm trying to waylay it here. Good. Also going after the Tabitha. Yoshimo is willing. Holy shit. Okay. Let's make sure we have everyone on Tabitha. Good, good, good. Fuck up all these bears. Great. Let's see, let's launch some more... ...spells down here at the Beastmaster. This is very clever, right? Having the Beastmaster down here. Just firing at us. It, ma it makes for kind of like a fun little... ...little encounter situation, right? Let's get healed up. On Animan. I love the smell of daisy. 
Oh in shit! The morning. A minotaur. Huh? Okay. There we go. Take morning. care of you and the minotaur. Oh, leopard as well. <laughs> We're just <laughs> fucking ripping through everything. Fuck yes. All right. Good. What's this? Stone to flesh. Beast master key. That's what we want. Potion of strength. Am I needed? I'm not accustomed to such loads. I've had to drop something. Let's ID the short bow. Twigan bow. Plus one. The Tuigans are a nomadic people widely dispersed across the steppe regions of Faerun, but bound together by a common bloodline. The bows they make are specially tailored for their mobile warriors, and the process used is carefully guarded, but the result is well known. Any bow of Tuigan origin can be fired faster than is possible with a normal one. Oh my god, three shots per round? I mean, we're kind of beyond now, plus one bows, especially on our short bow user, that being Mazzy. But holy fuck. Three shots per round? Also, how does that... How does that interact with the passive skill that Mazzy now has to where Mazzy, uh, thanks to having so many pips in short bow, does an extra attack? Would that make it four shots per round or six? Right? Because if you're shooting the short bow an extra time per round thanks to your skill, and the short bow is inherently magically enchanted to always shoot three shots per round, doesn't that imply that it would shoot six? Like, holy fuck. It's like a shotgun, then. Okay. That's wild. That is absolutely fucking wild. Okay, uh, let's toss that over there, put that inside the scroll case. Good. Get the potion of strength. Abyss be paid well for this. That's everything, huh? Yeah. All right, let's head on back. Oh, whoops! There was a ID scroll here. Yep. I will oh, do. There we go. Good. Stash that. Yes. Okay. Cool. <gasps> I'm assuming we'll fight Letinen, unless they're just like a massive coward and decide to run. Which, fair enough, I guess. What? I will hold no more. Oh, whoop. The item is on the ground. Let's give that to... Well, shit. Okay, let's give that to Yoshimo. And we'll take this. Good, cool. Very well. Okay. Let's get everybody freed here. Get on with it. What oh, should we talk to you first? Can I yeah. even? I was like a... A moon blade. <laughs> oh no. Alright. Let's free everybody and then talk. You have the key. You have it. Thank the gods. And thank you truly, my friend, for what you have done. We are free, my brothers. Go now and free the women. Hendak will strike his blade into the heart of our so-called owner. So that he shall never trouble you again. Go and savor your freedom. I'm not sure what accent this is. Right now, it sounds very, like, French. But earlier, it sounded very, like, Arnie. <laughs> and then... Earlier, it sounded, like, very... Very, like, Indian, I would almost say. You know? Like, actual India, I should say. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Praise I can't fucking... Be. We are free... Free at last! <laughs> Thank you again, my friends. Now, to the task of killing that fiend Leighton. Assist me if you wish. Otherwise, stand and watch the vengeance of Hendak be fulfilled. Or maybe German, even. Run! Run! The slaves have escaped! Hell yes. Fucking kill them. Run! Run for your lives! They'll kill us for certain! God, I hope they do. Oh my god. Can we see can we see yeah, all the amazing shit go down? Oh no. I think Oh, here we go. Oh fuck, we need to help. Yeah! Gladiator. You slaving bastard, my family's blood is still stains your hands. Holy shit, we got help. Fucking murder them all. Holy shit. Okay. Let's 
toss that over there. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh my gosh, look at all the fucking security turned on us. Okay, over here. Good. Is this the plot to Russell Crowe's Gladiator, by the way? I only saw it when I was a little kid, so I really don't remember anything important about it. Okay. This will be simple. <laughs> it must be weird for for people here just for normal in shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> that said, they don't really seem to give a fuck. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. We take care of everything? I think maybe we have. Alright, we should confront Latinen. Let's do a quick save. Like, will this place come under new management or whatever? Maybe Hendak? Wherever they went? Okay, Latinen. You've ruined me, Lila Schnub. With the slaves free, I'll lose most of my business. And with my debts, my life as well. The sight of you sickens me. Go. Good. Okay. <laughs> you probably should lose your life as well. <laughs> All things considered, that's probably great. <laughs> You're fucking horrible. <laughs> okay. Let's go over this way. Hmm. I think they escaped. Okay. Was that quest complete? No. Oh, I guess there there were the other children huh? back there, right? We got kind All of right, then. wrapped up in the fun of the whole situation. Oh, there goes Hendak. Oh, there might be a show down here now. Hell yeah. I want to see, I want to see. What? Hendak? You ignorant, barbaric slave! You're behind all of this chaos, aren't you? I oh my god. Out of your hide. <gasps> I didn't, I didn't recognize him at first. We had an, we have another Matt Groening verse character, our, our main protagonist, the ball spawn, their voice, right? Is this not, uh, what's his name? Uh, Professor fucking, uh, oh my god, Farnsworth, right? From, from Futurama, is that not him? That sounds just like him. Isn't it Farnsworth? I almost said Frank, which is Simpsons, but Farnsworth, right? Enough, fiend. You no longer own me. And I'll ensure that you no longer claim ownership over any other as well. I have survived your hellish fighting bit for years. You are no match for me. Maybe maybe he's like a combo kind of person here. Hendak might be like French Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? That might be that might be what what's going on. We shall see. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, we can't intervene. There. It is finally over, Leighton. All the years of cruel and evil acts that you have committed for nothing more than coins in your pocket. Burn in the abyss, fiend! I owe you my thanks once again. As do all you have freed. I intend to take this place as payment for my slavery, to ensure it is never used as such again. Oh. I wish I did not have to ask, but there is one more task that needs doing. The slavers remain at large within Athkatla, hidden at their base here in the slums. They have many children yet that they retain as slaves. I would ask you to rid the city of this infestation once and for all. I've already done this. The children are free. You've completed the task, I see. I can't tell you how overjoyed I am that so many children were rescued and that nobody will here will face slavery again. Ugh. At least for a while. I'm not naive enough to think that the slavers will not return. I shall watch for them, however, and fight them if I can. 
You have done more than was required of you, and for that you have Hendak's most humble thanks. I've collected some of Lettinen's more valuable items here for you. I hope this is at least some small reward for the good you have done. Cool. Okay. We lost Hagen's key. Plate mail and bastard sword. I leveled up. Okay. That doesn't happen every day. Let's see here. Can we ID the sword? Condar, plus one. At a first glance, this sword appears much like any other. In the presence of any shape-shifting creature, however, the blade becomes warm as its power stirs. Its namesake was the original owner of the weapon, and his tale, though mostly long forgotten, was wrought with treachery and deceit. Rumors persist that he paid a fearsome price for this blade, but with it, he revealed the true identities of those that sought to betray him. Their names and crimes, however, are long since lost to history. Well, this would have been great in Baldur's Gate 1. <laughs> okay. It is, yeah, a bastard sword. Okay. Let's see. Where did that plate mail go? Is this it? I guess so. Is it better for you? Yeah, it is. There you go. Can I have that? Please, let me help. Death Fog? And Summon Nishru. Let's read this. Okay. I've dealt a death blow to the slave trade in Athkatla, freeing both Hendak and the other gladiators from their prison in the Copper Coronet, as well as the slave children in the slaver compound in the slums. No more gladiators will be purchased for the Copper Coronet, now that Ledinen is dead and Hendak is in charge. That's cool! Alright. Good. Death Fog. The casting of a Death Fog spell creates an area of solid fog that has the additional property of being highly acidic. All animal life not immune to acid suffers 8 points of damage for each round they are exposed to the vapors of the Death Fog. Death Fog will also instantly kill all summoned creatures regardless of their hit dice and immunities. Oh my god, what? Instantly kills all summoned creatures. That is wild. Wow, we actually learned it. Holy shit. Summon Nishru. By casting the Summon Nishru spell, a wizard calls into existence a magical being of considerable power, the Nishru. At first glance, this appears to be some sort of mist, but upon closer examination, this boiling, churning red mass of vapors and shapes moves with a life of its own. Drawn toward magic like a moth to the flame, the Nishru feed on the energies surrounding and used by wizards. Luckily, there is no question as to the loyalty of the creature, and it will not attack its summoner even though it would like nothing better. The Nishru have no physical attacks at all, although physical attacks can hurt them. Each time a Nishru touches a target wizard and wraps its tendrils around him, the wizard loses one random spell of the highest level currently memorized. The Nishru is completely immune to magic, except for death spell, and magic will actually heal it. The creature will remain under the wizard's control until slain, or until the spell's duration expires. Oh my god, that's like ridiculously powerful. If we have to fight like a wizard enemy, holy shit. Which it seems like, I don't know, the main antagonist of the game is a type of wizard. <laughs> okay. I almost don't want to put it on Nalia because it's that good. Yeah, I don't think I will because I'm not sure if I'm going to use Nalia that long. Right, especially if we get Emowyn back. Yeah. Okay, let's take this stuff. No more. The item is on the ground. Good. Okay. I've had better times drown and face first in gutter water, bleeding from every orifice, don't you know? Oh, he's pissed because we're doing nice, good stuff. Okay. But we are done with this quest now, aren't we? I am pleased at the progress that this ill-conceived group has made. 
I had not thought such a thing possible. <laughs> what a jackass. Okay, cool. Let's see. Hendak, do you have anything else to say? A good day to you, Lila Schnub. Hendak welcomes you to his inn as the champion and hero that you are. Is there something that I may do for you? I simply wish to see what you have in stock. It's not as much as the fiend had, but it's still plenty. And it's at a significant discount for you. Just speak to Bernard. I still have him handling the store. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I guess a lot of the people out here just had no idea what the fuck was going on. Okay, yeah, same as usual. Oh, since Hendek has promised us a discount, I'd like to see what you keep on tap here. Oh, nothing new. Okay. Buy and sell. Anything new or particularly interesting? I don't know if I ever looked at your actual equipment stuff here. <laughs> I don't remember actually looking through this. Azure Edge? Yeah, I don't think I've read any of these. Did I actually look through this stuff? God, I don't I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, we may as well read the unique stuff. Oh, Blade of Roses. It's a longsword. This blade possesses an unearthly splendor, and it is likely that Sune, the goddess of beauty and passion, had a hand in its creation. The effect it has on the wielder is immediate, and more than once in its history has this sword been the secret behind a lackluster soldier's sudden elevation at court. Yeah, plus two charisma. Okay. Did I skip over any? No. Mauler's arm? Jurg the Mauler was proud chieftain, was proud chieftain of a northern tribe, but he feared he would be the last of his family to lead. His son Cullen was sickly and couldn't meet the traditional requirements of strength for a chieftain. Jurg knew that wise leadership took more than brawn, however, so he bargained to enchant this mace such that it would cover Cullen's weakness. Who Jurg made the deal with is unknown, but the cost was apparently high. Cullen came to rule soon after. Wow, it sets your strength to 18. Not half bad. It's a mace. The Sleeper. This belonged to Sitale, an uncharacteristically evil elf known as the Slaver of the Sword Coast. Jesus Christ. Until his sudden death several years ago, Satale, or Satalk? Yes, yeah, Satalk. Commanded a large force of human, dwarven, and gnomish brigands, using the sleeper to keep them in line. It has a chance to incapacitate any human, dwarf, gnome, or halfling by inducing deep slumber, though elves are conveniently immune. Any human or demi-human, excluding elves, hit by the sleeper must save versus poison with a plus four bonus or fall asleep for three rounds. It's a flail or morning star. Oh yeah, it's a morning star. Okay. The army scythe. No, I'm familiar with this one. Oh, because this is the same exact fucking weapon from the first game. Yeah, I'm familiar with this because they just, they ported it over, right? This is it. This was our go-to crossbow that we had Emuin using for ages. Wow. Is it the same? Is there anything new about us having used it in the first game? No, I don't think so. Yeah, this thing was wild. One extra attack per round. Huh. Cool. Sling of Seeking. Unlike most other slings, the Sling of Seeking does not require ammunition of any kind. When no bullets are equipped, the sling fires magical ammunition in the form of plus one bullets, making it an ideal weapon to use against magically protected foes. It can also fire normal ammunition. Ah. Okay. So it's like a lesser version of the cool sling that we bought. Stonefire. The Stonefires were an old lineage of dwarves, and the eldest male of the line carried this axe, an heirloom of utmost importance. Unfortunately, they were decimated in 1150 Dale Reckoning, 
falling in a mere two years to a mysterious plague. Olgan, keeper of the axe, fled in hopes of escaping the inevitable, but he died several weeks later. His body was found in the Cloakwood Forest, but the axe was missing. Didn't we go to the Cloakwood Forest? All right. Standard plus three axe, except it does plus two fire damage. Azure Edge. Gullen Rockfire, Slayer of Undead, crafted this powerful throwing axe. Oh. Expressly for reinforcing his claim to his namesake. Blessed by a cross-section of gods, this weapon does phenomenal damage against creatures unwisely rebelling against their deceased status and can potentially destroy them in a single blow. Obviously, Gullen no longer carries Azure Edge, and it is rumored that he died fighting a powerful vampire years ago, only to rise as one himself. This may, may have softened his stance regarding the undead, at the very least prompting, prompting a change of name. Oh. This is like a big reference to Castlevania, isn't it? A throwing axe meant for killing undead, sometimes killing them in one hit. Yeah. Yeah. Died to a vampire. Maybe came back changing a name. Yeah. This is this is probably very much meant to be a wink and nod to Castlevania. Returns to the wielder's hand. Undead. Must save versus death at negative four or be utterly destroyed. Yeah, cool. And it doubles as either a melee or thrown axe. That said, I think... I think they were normally blue. You know, the axes in Castlevania. Correct me if I'm wrong. Though maybe the fact that it's red is also meant to be a wink and a nod at it. You know? Like, oh, this is ours. Ours is just the inverse. It's the opposite. Sword of Flame, plus one. This blade burns with a magical fire, and a charring blast is released whenever a hit is scored. Meta Infernum is etched on the hilt though it appears somewhat faded and may not be original to the sword. I think this was also from the first game. All of these weapons aren't from the first game, right? And I've just forgotten them because we didn't have characters to use them. Right? <laughs> that would be funny if they were all from the fucking first game. I guess it's possible. Right? Because we certainly had quite a few that we didn't end up using. All right, let's sell off some shit. We got a gem bag that's ready to go. There we are. Three. Four of those. One. Two of these necklaces. One gem. Ring. Necklaces. A whole bunch of gems. Good. All right. Lovely. Close that. Do we have any, like, basic plus one weapons and shit that we need to get rid of now? Have we accumulated anything like that? We've got regular mace. Regular splint mail. We could ditch this cloak of protection. We're starting to not need them. That said, maybe we will need it. We haven't met every potential follower yet, have we? Get rid of these. Oh, these are all normal weapons. Okay. Well, not normal, but plus ones, I should say. Okay, anything here? I think we're good. Yeah, that short bow is absurd. If it actually does... Very well. Like, <laughs> what it seems like it does. Is there a reason to go back here and free these kids? Who are actually still locked up? We should probably try and do that. Before I forget. There we are. Maybe I can do it myself. Just as I would have thought. Yeah, there we go. I don't think I have the key on me, but it's fine. Yeah, they've already been vacated. All right, cool. This will be simple. Well, shit. Look at that. Let's head over here. Is there anyone else here that we should speak to now that we've done all that? I don't think so. We could go over to the um 
the slaver stockade from the outside. We might have a fight with some of the slaver guards there. Oh, let's also, um, shit. Let's level up. Okay. We don't have any points to pop into anywhere. Sure. Fair enough. I wouldn't mind having another type of weapon that I can start popping a whole bunch of points into, but I guess I'm fine if we never get that. You know, I wouldn't mind being able to be like, oh yeah, maybe I feel like using... I don't know. Well, Warhammers are one-handed. What other two-handers are there? Fuck, I guess halberds and spears? No, just halberds. I guess that's why I put a point in halberd. <laughs> okay. Sure. Alright. Oh, we got all that. Oh, fuck, I didn't even check what my extra bonuses were at the bottom right. <laughs> fuck, what did I have? What all did I get? I don't know. I mean, I guess I can load. I quick saved a lot. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Death saving throw reduced by two. Wand saving throw reduced by two. Polymorph by two. Breath weapon by two or by three. Spells by two. Thacko down by one. Three HP. One lore. Okay. Fair enough. Alrighty. I miss All having something to to put a point into every level. I like that. I guess that's something that they ended up changing in future versions of Dungeons and Dragons, right? Let's see here. Slaver Stockade. Did I check this weird little nook? I must have. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, looks like we'd already run through everything. I don't see any guards posted out here either. Gather your party before venturing forth. We'll just poke in you real fast. Your party before venturing forth. Yep, all clear. Okay. Yes. There we are. Good. Very well. Now, should we head on back? Well, I guess we could get rid of Corgan, yes, I right? Thought it would be helping others and doing good things. I really don't have a need for Corgan to be in the party whatsoever. Because he fulfills the exact same role as me, and and I don't know if I find him to be an asshole, <laughs> right? So I I don't know if I want him to be around. Uh, yeah, I think let let's go on back, and we'll swap out for Mazzy. Okay, there we are. Part of me wants to put that wild ass bow on Mazzy as well, and just see how that works. You know, and we, we just, like, run through basic ammo on lower-level dudes. Okay, Darnie's hold. Oh, wait, Mazzy went back to... Yeah, Mazzy is back at Trade Mate. Oh, fuck. Okay. Sure. Well, let's go here, and this let's deposit Corgan out here, right? Okay. Let's do a quick rest out here as well. Let's see if anything weird happens. Oh, shit. Something weird is happening. <laughs> Turl. Anamon Delrin, son of Kor, I come as the bearer of dire news. Your father requests your presence at his estate. Dire news, say you. What reason would I have to return to my father? Your sister is dead, most foully murdered by all accounts. Dead? By Helm? Murdered? How can this be? Why would you say such a thing? I'm truly sorry, my lord. Perhaps you should return to your home as your father has requested. Aye, and ride quick. Lila Schnub, we make haste. We must head for my father's home in the government district of Athkatla. As long as I lead this group, we will do no such thing. You can do nothing for her, so let us continue on our present quest. I mourn the loss for your sister, Anna, and I truly am sorry. I am truly sorry. We shall make our way to your father's house with all haste. Though I am saddened to hear of your sister's untimely demise, I have other things that I must look to first. Yeah, we'll make our, our way there. I must discover the truth about this murder. Let us go. Stop. Do you oh, see? shit. Ready yourself. Okay, she just said stop. Think we got very lucky there. Alright. 
Dermon, I would speak at you. As sharp-eyed as ever, but your choice in companions has not improved. Is your treachery not enough that you must consort with a killer? I thought you better than... Shut up! I said I would speak at you. This matter is finished. I will not acknowledge this again. If you press it, I will be forced to deal with you. As you are forced to deal with the harpers that died in Athkatla? Yes, actually, and you well know it. Galvaray was no more than a har no more a harper than a treant. His actions betrayed him and all those that followed him. The garish hold, his political agenda, he was me the garish hold, his political agenda, he was merely using the weight of the harper name to promote himself. Tell me, what did he offer you? You don't know what you are saying, Jahira. Your association with this Lila Schnub has poisoned your judgment. Then I'm better for it. Call me a traitor, but I have followed the spirit of the Harpers. You are the traitor, and if the events were known, others would see. Ah, but the events are not known. What is accepted is that you have killed your brethren and taken up with a known murderer. There is no evidence existing to the contrary. Of course not. Despite the ambushes, you will still be able to claim the moral high ground for your actions. What happened to you, Dermon? I do not know you. One grows weary. We should have done good works. We would have done good works, Jahira, just from a more profitable perspective. At the cost of innocence, that is always the way. Innocent? Is that what you call Lila Schnub? But she is a child of Baal. Whether her nature is good or bad, it will certainly be disruptive. It certainly disrupted you. The innocents also include Harpers that have died thinking they were fighting for the right cause. Galvaray's cause. Your cause. Rega regrettable losses. As was yours, though I assume, though I suspect you have been gone for years. Ah, your wit is still the most dangerous trait about you, Jahira. I told you to cultivate it. Little did I know I would be on the receiving end one day. Save it, Dermon. I've no more guilt about facing you or any other sent on this fool's crusade. You are the betrayers, not I. I know this in my heart. You'll pardon me if I have a look for myself. Oh, shit. Okay, it's fucking rumble time. Glory. Let's see here. Uh, let's throw down a bless. Actually, let's throw down defensive harmony and we'll do bless as Animan. What? Okay. Let's go after these casters back here if we can. Holy shit, she's getting fucked up big style. Let's try a spell thrust. Who do we kill? Did we kill, um... Yeah, Dermon. Okay. Good. Let's get more buffs going. And let's try and throw a heal on you. I'm I'm one now. Holy shit. She is so fucked. What is it now? Oh, she fucking died. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can keep this whole shit situation rolling, though. There we are. Man, I don't know if we have anyone now who can penetrate the Wizard Lord. I shall go forth at your command. There we go. Good, good, good. Let's try and throw medium wounds cure. Over here on Yoshimo. Oh shit, Shahira is like chaos mode. You shall oh my god, my fucking everybody is except me. Oh, and Corgan. Okay. As long as we have one person still alive who can resurrect, we're fine. Bring them on. I ain't done. 
Let's see what your guts be looking like. There we go. They're going to just annihilate one another, I think. Let's try and throw our heal onto Animan, if we can. Hmm. Okay, well... <laughs> we, we took care of everyone. Let's see. Be quick with it. I'll best be paid well for this. Get on with it. No time at all. All right. <laughs> Quite the place for this to happen, honestly. But uh, eh, what can you do? All right. I did not wish to do this. I did not. We are in the right, Lila Shna, but why does it still hurt? The right thing is not always the easiest. Actually, it's usually the bloody hard bit. People do not always want to see reason. You do what you can. You know the answers to such things better than me. I'll spare you my cliches. People do not always want to see reason. Yes, yes, you do what you can, but not always what you want. The big little book of Aluanto, right? Insightful. I'm sorry, Lila Schnob. I shouldn't be taking my anger out on you. Let's just keep get moving. I'll be all right in a while. Okay. Let's see. Let's get a Harper's Call going. Uh, Nalia. I can dance on the end of a pin as well. Okay. Holy shit. All right then. Let's see. How many IDs do we have? Because we can do some IDing real quick, How I think. Can I help? Oh my gosh, look at all this shit we've got here. What in the hell? I'm not accustomed to such loads. I've had okay, to drop amulet, something. ID it. The protector, plus one. Familiar with that. Bracers. Of AC defense five. Oh, it's pretty good. Bolts, light crossbow. Oh, I'm all out of IDs. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, you know what? Maybe in between videos, we'll tend to all of this uh, mess here. And if there's any unique weapons and whatnot that we haven't read before, I'll try and move them over to, like... Oh, Corgan. I'll move them over to Cor. Well, no, because we'll we'll drop Corgan from the party. Actually, maybe to Animan. Yeah, fuck it, Animan. And uh, also, I'll try and situate a whole bunch of our excess junk inside of our weapon storage area and all of that at the keep. You know, yeah, that seems like a good idea. We'll sort through all this in between videos. Uh, it, what a fucking <laughs> place to have this all go down, right? I was almost hopeful that Herodalus, Valigar, and Minsk, and everybody in Airy would all join in to help, but they were just kind of fucking vibing. <laughs> all right, when next we come back, uh, everybody will be healed up. Hopefully, we'll all be good to go, all that shit. Until next time, please take care of each other. Now, yeah. You're oh. over tall, beardless, long limbed, and lack strength. You disgust me. Okay. What provoked this hostility, Corgan? You, de you deserve the wrath of my ire, weakling. You deserve it because you're coddled, privileged imbecile, a sad little nobleman's offspring. With what grout you've left? Never question what I've to say. Else each night upon the morn, you wake screaming for fear of what I may do to ye. I'm sorry, Corgan. I see no conflict and wish only to be left alone. Forgive my slights if I made any. You quiver and wither like all the others. You're a gutless coward, and so you'll stay. Oh, shit. Honestly, Corgan getting down to, like, one of Nalia's greatest, like, personal flaws, right? Is that she does come from a place of privilege, and, like, like he said, is, is very much, like, quick to just... How, how would you say? She, she is very much just, like, a poster child of 
the worst traits of liberalism. You know, like she's so willing to day of freedom to felt like this back in the ballrooms of home to lay down any of her supposed morals. According to this, right? She has no problem laying down her supposed morals in the interest of uh, not having hostilities with Corgan, no matter how fucked up of a, a gesture or insinuation he may have about any situation or even her. Right. She's coward. She's cowardly. She's a gutless coward, like he said. She will she will eternally like bend over backwards just to not have any degree of conflict. You know what? Right? Long time ago? Even if yeah, I was like a, a moon blade. <laughs> even if otherwise she would have been uh talking up her own morals and ethics, she very scarcely stands by them, you know? Like she she is um I don't know. Yeah, yeah, she she's like the poster child of the worst traits of liberalism, right? She is she's like the definitive to to put into perspective from other playthroughs we've done. In Disco Elysium, she's an ultra liberal through and through, right? She does not stand by her principles whatsoever according to this, right? Like he legit calls her out as being the most cowardly of all probably the good characters, right? And maybe that is the case, right? I, we don't know yet. We haven't met everybody, but certainly she seems the worst off and the most likely to, at any inconvenience, go back to um, adhering to sort of... ...when there is evil to be fought. There is no glory in watching the grass grow. ...to sort of adhering to traditional class lines, right? Like, if... If she's in the thick of it and things get ugly and her, her morals are questioned and like the shit has hit the fan, she will just fall back to her places of privilege that she was born into. Right. She will just fall back and be like, oh, I don't want any trouble and all of that, uh, despite having maybe in privacy said otherwise that like, oh, I don't like so and so. I think that this is the, the a bad idea or whatever. She she stands for nothing. Right. She's willing to sacrifice her own code of, of ethics and honor or whatever just in the, the name of, um, like, having there be peace, in a sense, right? Not not just peace, peace, but, like, in staying out of it, you know? She'd rather not be involved than have to actually work her way through her own morality, her own ethics, you know, her own code. Like I said, I, Nalia, I am thoroughly into how her character is is written i'm incredibly into it it's like such a a wild characterization for the time that this game came out i feel you know there, there's like I, I i struggle to think of anyone quite written like a character as she is i don't know very very good like she's she is pretty, she's fucking bad, right? She's, she's good, but she is fucking bad for all those reasons. And, and I've yet to encounter a character quite like her until fucking like, I guess, Disco Elysium, right? That said, we still have plenty more to, uh, CRPGs to play. Uh, but that's the next big example in which you encounter a character with exactly these types of principles, sort of illustrating this sort of point about this type of person, you know? It's incredibly fascinating that they keyed into it. it. It's like, I don't think she's probably a fan favorite character, but I am incredibly impressed and into the way in which they managed to pull off her characterization and all of that, right? As being a sort of foil. I don't know. It, it's extremely good and way deeper than I would have expected for this type of character, because you could so easily just be like, oh yeah, this is just a hoity-toity upper-class noblewoman or whatever, and just continually lean back on that without actually lampshading or even attempting to analyze the root of all that, you know? I don't know. Very, very good shit. Very good shit. Um, although Nalia isn't terribly useful to our party, it is a big reason for me to want to keep her in the party because of that right because i so often enjoy her exchanges with stuff 
on a on a like meta textual level and and like looking at the writing in that way it's extremely good it's extremely good all right uh when next we come back we will do all that shit that i said right before we we closed off the we tried to close off the video huh until next time please take care of each other